So you have someone that's your wife, supposed to be your best friend, supposed to have your back, protect the family, put that first, right? But that is the actual person that's threatening you as the protector of the family. Are you willing to deal with that? Are you able to deal with that emotionally? Slum like peace, Coach Nadir, one of the co-authors of Let's Talk Collision Uncensored and one of the founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships. And this message is a short message, but it's for the brothers. All right. I recently did a video when I uh, talked about a situation where a brother was threatened with a his wife taking his children and uh, running away or well, running away with them or basically, you know, she went to her mother's house and she would take the kids and everything else and threatened him. We're taking the children from him should he decide to marry again. And this was not from the beginning. This was after several months after she agreed to polygyny, after she had uh, communicated with the potential incoming spouse uh, via text message and everything else. And she went to different lectures and she was on board. So it seemed until the week before the actual wedding. So this is what I, this is my message to the brothers, because the last one was, was talking more to the sisters, because that's a, that's a very evil thing to do. That type of sabotage is very evil. And I spoke to the sisters mainly in parts of even the comments where um, some was just saying, well, you know, you have to understand the emotional state of a woman and all this, stuff. lots of excuses just by sex. So a lot of women come in and they immediately give excuses and I don't, excuses are poor reason to be useless. See, when I'm speaking with you, you have to understand I'm coaching out there, right? I'm the coach that is known to help people get their shift together. So with that being said, I'm not only speaking as a coach, I'm not only speaking as a person practicing polygyny, as a husband, I'm speaking as a father of five daughters, three of whom want their husband to practice polygyny, and they've never been in a relationship. Okay, two are married in monogamy, alhamdulillah, and three of them want to practice polygyny. But of course, when we talk about polygyny and being a man of value, and as my wife said, you have to be more than twice the man in order to really practice polygyny. So I'm going to share something with you, um, really just to give you some advice. Again, as a brother, as a coach, as a father, as a husband, one is, are you willing and able to handle the emotional Olympics that you may be put through when it comes to choosing to marry again and practice polygyny? Are you willing and able? All right, when we talk about increasing your emotional IQ, you're going to be faced with different dynamics. You may be faced with threats. Like many brothers say, look, you know, I don't want to tell my wife just yet. I want to go ahead and, you know, get married, get things settled and so on. So she can kind of, you know, fill things out and then let her know. And of course, we talk about best practices is that, you know, you have this open, honest conversation um, prior to. I mean, I've learned and been through some of those mistakes already. But the emotional challenge and strain that you can put on. If you have children with your wife. What will happen if she threatens you with taking your children away from you? Are you ready for that? Now, of course, there are situations where not only does that not make any type of sense at all, but there have been judges who say, OK, well, is this something that you guys agree to? You know, is this part of your religion? Is this an understanding that you have? And then they they see through a lot of the manipulation because they, it doesn't really matter. In general, you know, people think, that OK, well, children just go with the woman. In many states are women friendly, but. When you bring out all the facts of the whole thing, you know, they get caught out. I don't care if it's a, a Judge Judy type judge or a person that's just looking at the facts of the matter. And say, OK, why are you trying to um, remove these children from their other parent? You know, because, again, when I talk about that's evil thinking, I mean, just the trauma that will come from or that we put on the children in a type of situation. Just even in, even the threat of trying to use them as pawns is something that's very evil. But are you as a man who wants to practice polygyny up to that challenge? Because it may be an empty threat, you might have to call a bluff. Or it may be real, and you have to deal with it. Then, of course, the other situation is that's just one specific situation. But the other part is this. Let's say she does that. She does threaten that, right? Well, how do you move past that now that she did that to you? So you have someone that's your wife, supposed to be your best friend, supposed to have your back, 
Protect the family. Put that first, right? But that is the actual person that's threatening you as the protector of the family. Are you willing to deal with that? Are you able to deal with that emotionally? See, it's not easy. It's a lot of things that are easier said than done. But as a man, as a protector for your family, as a provider for your family, as a one who's supposed to exert personal power, are you equipped to deal with that? Because if you're not equipped to deal with that, then you shouldn't be um, considering polygyny at the time until you increase your intelligence emotionally. All right, because that's not the time to throw hands. Nope. Nope, that's not it. That's not the time to flex and beat your chest and say what you're going to do or not going to do. And so, no. Are you emotionally equipped to deal with that? Then if that does happen, if that does happen, if you are threatened with something like that, if some, if some woman chooses to be evil and try to sabotage and control you emotionally, emotionally manipulate you in that fashion by using your own children against you, how are you going to handle that? How are you going to handle the emotions, the love that's going to be lost and challenge your trust and loyalty that is betrayed for you as the man, as the father, as the husband? How are you going to be able to deal with that? See, people ask me, you know what? You know, I really want to practice polygyny and I'm equipped to do it financially and so on. I know I can do the time and everything, but you know what? My wife, she's on board or she's kind of back and forth and so on. So I'm like, listen, man, you got to make a decision for your family. You are either going to make the decision, one, that says, hey, you know what? I'm not going to practice polygyny. I'm just going to, I'll be monogamous again, which is fine. It's totally up to you. We're just simply pro-morals. So I'm just going to stay with her. But you know there may be some resentment that is planted and that may grow and fester into something else. So you have to determine whether or not you want to stay in the situation that you're in, that you feel that you um, want to expand and practice polygyny, because nothing has to be deficient or defunct or wrong in your current marriage in order to choose to practice polygyny. But if you have someone else that you feel is emotionally manipulating, then there's some resentment that will be there. Listen up, ladies. That's not going to make your husband come closer to you and connect closer to you with threatening him, especially with that he loves more than almost anything else, which is his family and his children. And I know the thing is, well, well, if he loves family and children so much, why would you want to marry somebody and hurt me? Listen, listen, we are not the same. Men are not simply women with penises and women are not men with vaginas. We are not the same. We're not built the same. And I know I've dealt with and talked about it biologically not the same. With our biological clocks or the cost for sex being much higher for women than it is for men. And men not having the inherent value that a woman has as a nourisher and a nurturer that a man must demonstrate as a protector and provider. We are not the same. Not even the things that we desire. Men don't care about the rims and the jewelry and all the stuff. No, they care who heads it turns, which are those of women. They want to be appreciated, admired and everything else. So a strong, intelligent woman will know how to treat her husband. Okay? So, again, we're not the same. It's not about your emotions, your feelings. It's about the bigger picture of society. Again, factually speaking, in the United States, there are more women than men. So if every man was straight, was um, compatible, there was not an addict, was not beating women, and there were great guys, and they actually married one woman, there's still four million women unmarried. So this isn't about the emotional part. No, I'm talking about the emotional part of the man. How are you going to deal with that resentment if you choose not to practice religion? And if you choose to practice polygyny and then there's an emotional manipulation that goes on or different dynamics you're not familiar with, how are you dealing with your emotional part, bro? We deal with it differently with women. You're probably not going to go in the room and cry about it or walk. Maybe you'll run. Maybe you'll work out. Maybe you do. We usually tend in. We, we the testosterone based creatures usually turn inward. When we're feeling different types of emotions that we know how to deal with. But what are you going to do? All right, because there's a risk involved in everything. And keep in mind that all relationships we have are voluntary. All of them that we have, whether we choose to respect our parents or not, or our children or not, or come and stay home and provide or protect or cheat, all of these things are voluntary. We have the power of choice. Whether we do the right thing or a better thing or the wrong thing or an evil thing, we have that under control in our power. But if you're talking about practice religion and being more than twice the man, what are you gonna do should you be faced with something that tests your emotional limits? 
or you do practice polygyny, but now you have to mediate from different sides because now you see maybe there's some jealousy things you're not deal or not used to. There's a lot of assumption and stuff that goes on. There are a lot of these normal, natural things and tendencies that we get from women, which I believe personally is the best creation ever. But out of that best creation ever, there's still things that you're going to have to grow and deal with as a man. So are you emotionally apt enough to deal with it? How are you going to channel it? How are you going to deal with that negative energy that may come at you? How are you going to deal with the ostracizing that comes from other community members or relatives or people that you care about? But again, the biggest hump, what if the one that's supposed to be the closest to you, just by you living in your masculine in nature, in your ability to take care of another family and grow a legacy and choose to marry again? I don't care if you, you want to have more children. Some women say, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to have any more children. It leaves you stuck. That's kind of a form of bullying that we talk about. As a man, if you want to have 10 children, 12 children, whatever it may be, and the wife says, look, I'm three, that's it. It's a wrap. We live in a society that says, well, it's a wrap for you then. You know what I'm saying? But if you're legacy-based and, you, and you're doing and fulfilling your responsibilities, what are you going to do when you come across these different challenges? How are you going to deal with your emotions? How are you going to be able to communicate effectively? How are you going to be able to practice influence? All of these things matter. And nope, I'm not going to give you solutions right now. I'm going to ask you those questions. Because the better quality of questions you ask yourself, the better quality of life you live with the proper answers. But if you do want some more information, I do have a free three video course that I put out on OPRKingsandKingdoms.com. But that's all for now. I want to ask you, brothers, you came across something like this, what you going to do? You may risk losing, you may risk resentment, but you're going to risk something one way or another. Or... You might be of the, the blessed few that already have a woman that's already mature. And you might not have to deal with that at all. But lo and behold, when you practice polygyny, you're still going to be dealing with things as you grow. So with that being said, remember, wish changes nothing, but a decision changes everything. Salam alaikum. Peace. Here are three ways outstanding personal relationships can help you. One is by following us on our social medias. Follow us on IG at Outstanding Relationships and on Facebook and YouTube at Outstanding Personal Relationships and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Number two, make sure you head over to OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com and subscribe to the email list. From there, you will get downloads as well as updates, any and all updates, and you also get an update on the release of our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny, Uncensored. Number three, if you are serious about polygyny relationships and, and really developing fulfillment and happiness, make sure you register for our Relationship Mastery Inner Circle, which is members only, which is downloads, it includes access to us live on a weekly basis. So that's at outstandingpersonrelationships.com slash RM. We'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Peace.